All right, so far this year, we've had quite a few Nike releases, and I wanted to give you guys a comparison on the $120 price range of the Odyssey React versus the brand new Pegasus 35. Give you guys my pros and cons on the Pegasus as well. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. And for all those people that searched on both of these shoes and want a runner's perspective, because I know they're both running shoes, but this is a casual sneaker channel for all those casual sneaker consumers like myself. So for those hardcore runners, I apologize, this isn't gonna be for you. And honestly, you guys kind of should know what you're getting with the Pegasus anyway, because the Pegasus is just that good for actual runners. My wife runs, she's run half marathons in Pegasus. We have a lot of really close friends that are diehard runners and all of them use the Pegasus. So hopefully that's your answer. This is the newest version, the 35, and it definitely has some aesthetic changes from the previous one. What I wanna do is kind of break down both of these two shoes because they're both at the $120 price point and from a casual perspective, which one is the most comfortable and which one offers the most bang for the buck. So as I mentioned, both of these shoes cost $120. This one features the Nike React cushioning and a big heaping helping of Nike React, the latest and greatest technology that's sort of like the Lunarlon 2, if you will. And then in the Zoom Pegasus 35, you actually have full length Zoom underneath this in a Cushlon midsole. Zoom is definitely one of those technologies that's been created for a responsive cushioning system, and React is pretty much the same thing, just in a different format. Both of these shoes actually have an attached tongue. You can see that it is detached, but it's also attached along the sides. But aesthetically, at least, it looks like it has a tongue, which I like. On the Odyssey React, though, you can see it's just the neoprene a liner for the tongue. It doesn't have the same sort of vibe and look of having a tongue on the shoe. Both feature that prominent Nike swoosh along the sides of the shoe, as well on the inside. The Odyssey React also has an additional Nike branding here, while the Pegasus sports a 35 on the heel cup. And something interesting about the Pegasus, you'll notice that the top actually comes to a point here, as well as the bottom. And that's kind of interesting, like usually you don't see this much of a point at the top. Example, Zoom Fly previously has a point on the back, but it just has a regular collar. Zoom Elite is the same way. This is the wife's pair, has a point on the back, but it doesn't have a point at the top. I couldn't find her Pegasus 34s, but her Pegasus 33s look completely different than the revamped version of the 35s. It definitely feels more futuristic looking and way more aerodynamic on the newest, latest, and greatest version, which I really dig. As I mentioned, the back section sticks out just like on the Zoom Fly, but nowhere near as aggressive as on the Zoom Vapor Street. This one has just a massive, ridiculous little heel section, as you could see, comparison. And then the Mac Daddy of them all, the Zoom Vapor Fly 4%, you could see the back section as well. So it seems like Nike's definitely going with that trend. And considering runners supposedly only like prance on their tippy toes, I don't know if they really need all of that on the back section because everybody says nobody runs like this. All they do is go like this, but it, it is what it is. They have that same aesthetic and they definitely are kind of running with it on all of the new Nike running shoes. As for the laces, you can see that this has Flywire as well as Hyperfuse. The Odyssey React just features that Hyperfuse material. And on the Odyssey React, they do have that stability plate and it's definitely bigger on the inside of the shoe. And you don't really have something like that on the Pegasus. But this material on the heel cup is pretty significant. It's definitely really sturdy and it doesn't feel like you're gonna be rolling around the shoe because this is really, really hard plastic. Definitely harder than on the Odyssey React and significantly more stability than on the Zoom Fly. And Vaporfly has nothing. Moving on to probably the most important part of the shoe, in my opinion, that is the midsole and the cushioning. And like I said, you have the Cushlon and you could see how crazy this ends up wrinkling. A lot of people really don't like that with a lot of the new Nike models is the crazy wrinkles that you get. You get the same effect on the React as well as the Zoom Vaporfly, unfortunately. If you don't like the wrinkles, you're not really gonna love these. But the wrinkles don't really bother me, although it's hard to tell where the lines of the aerodynamic sort of looks on the side of the shoe are versus where the wrinkles are now because there's just so many of them. And I've worn these for like four or five days so far, so just try to get a good wear in and see how comfortable they are. And as you can see, the React has the same problem. There's definitely some wrinkles, but you can see that the React material is definitely a lot softer than the Cushlon material. So this is like a lot harder to push in. This is like super, super soft. So for the cushioning wise, like for me, there's no question the Odyssey React is definitely superior if that's the type of cushioning that you want. If you want a softer, more cloud-like, boost-like feel, then the, the Odyssey React is hands down the better choice for you. If you like a firmer ride, but definitely has that spring and that bounce back that Zoom offers, and especially since this has full length Zoom now, then you can't really go wrong with the Pegasus 35. And lastly, the traction on the bottom of the shoes, you can see there's definitely quite a difference. 
This section right here is gonna be one that has a lot of wear on the Odyssey React because this is straight React uh, at the bottom of the shoe and it's really soft. It's one of the pain points I think of React where it just has a terrible visible wear look. And I mentioned that in my Epic React review also. You can see the crazy color changes of the shoe as well as this section right here is just definitely worn through. React does not wear very well when it does have direct contact with the cement or the ground. That's why they have the traction patterns, but unfortunately there's not enough traction to cover the high traffic areas of the shoe. And if you're gonna try to find the shoe that looks like it has the most longevity, then it's a no brainer that it's definitely this one. Like they just did a really good job on the traction of the Pegasus. And just to give you guys kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of the 35 and the 33, I'm pretty sure that the 34 looks similar to this, but if I'm wrong, leave a comment in the comment section. But you can see how it kind of has that crazy design along the side here and here and then it splits to have more of a traction pattern on this side. Now $120 isn't the most expensive pair of running sneakers on the market. Obviously these ones are $250 and they wear terribly as you could see at the bottom of there. Like $250, you wouldn't expect that. Some people disagree and have left many, many nasty comments saying that I'm an idiot because these are racing shoes and they're supposed to be used one time and then thrown away. And I would beg to differ. I don't think Nike's intent is to create the most elite fancy running shoe on the market and then have it just be a complete piece of trash by one run or something like that, which is what people were insisting in the comment section. And I just don't believe it. So I think that you can have a really expensive pair of shoes and it doesn't give you the longevity of the day-to-day -day type of wear. Now I know this is again a racing shoe, so maybe this isn't intended for day-to-day -day running, but it definitely let me down with the durability of the shoe. If you're looking for durability at $120 price point, less than half of the 4%, then I think that you're gonna actually get way more durability out of either of these sneakers for less than half the price. And I think that this one's definitely gonna be the one that is the most durable out of both. As for the uppers, it's kind of like a mesh upper on both of them. It's nothing fancy as you can see, and it looks very similar actually on both pairs. Um, you could see that it has an interesting sort of pattern and texture to the material, and it's nothing fancy. It's just very, very average on both pairs. So it's not flying it by any means or anything like that. And the inside collar material is nothing like crazy comfortable on either pair. Um, all in all, they're just both extremely average with that regard. But uh, I think that really for both of these shoes, you're really paying for the midsole technology, the React in the Odysseys, and then the full length Zoom, and just the name of the Pegasus with the Pegasus 35. So that being said, if I had to pin these two side by side, which one would I personally choose from a complete casual perspective and just overall comfort. For me, the Odyssey React is definitely the hands down winner. I definitely love uh, what Nike's done with the Nike React. The Vapor Streets have React also, and I definitely love this shoe, as well as the Epic React. Now, I've already mentioned if I had a choice between these two, that the Epic React would be my first choice, but this is $150, and these are $180. So for me personally, this is definitely the most bang for the buck at the $120 price point. I will say that they do fit snug for me, and so I would definitely go up a half a size if I were you. Nine and a half to me fits like a nine, but I would say that the Pegasus 35 fit true to size. A nine and a half actually fits me perfectly in these. One other thing I forgot to cover is the weight of the shoe, and actually the uh, Odyssey React feels lighter than the uh, Pegasus, for those actually wondering. For anybody that's like a serious runner that's ran in the Pegasus, and ran in these, like which one do you prefer? Please leave a comment in the comment section. Or if you ran in either of these two, which one do you guys prefer from the running perspective? Since I'm not lending that, you guys can weigh in in the comments with your guys' opinion. So now that we have the basics out of the way between these two, you guys already know that this is the one that I would prefer, but I do wanna give you guys more information about the Pegasus because this is a shoe that I was wearing more recently. I haven't done really a review of this and I kinda of wanted to just put both of these videos into one. So if you guys like that I'm doing that, please leave a thumbs up maybe on the video. But this shoe, I wanted to give you guys some metrics from myself and my wife because we both had different viewpoints on the overall uh, lovability of this Pegasus 35. Now I will tell you that I have tried a bunch of different sneakers. She actually has never tried on a pair of the Epic Reacts or the Odyssey Reacts. So she doesn't have the React technology to compare it to, I do. And because of that, I feel like these definitely um, are not as dope as what she thought they were. So let's get into the metrics. So for cushioning, she said that these are a four out of five. I said that these were a three out of five. I just didn't think they were as comfortable. Obviously for me, the Odyssey React offers way more cushioning. Responsiveness, she said 3.5, I said three. Upper material, she actually really liked it. She said a four. 
I said a three, it just was very average to me. Weight of the shoe, she said three, and I agreed with a three. The breathability of the shoe, three and three. Durability, she said four, and actually I said four as well. Stability, she said three, and actually I said four out of five. I actually felt like these were really stable on my feet. Traction, both of us actually said four out of five. We really liked the traction on these. And overall style, she said that she actually really likes these better than the regular Pegasus as well. And I said the same thing. So we both said four out of five. The overall value at $120, she said four out of five, but I disagreed and said three out of five because we all know that these are actually a four out of five. Actually, we all don't. Like those that have tried maybe uh, would say the same thing, but those that have not, maybe you guys just like the traditional Pegasus like she does. And those are the metrics that we both compared our Pegasus experience to. For me, it's definitely a very average shoe. Like it's nothing ridiculously comfortable on feet. It's a great shoe and I can understand why people really like the shoe. It's a comfortable shoe. I personally think it's a more stylish shoe than this one. And I like the fact that they have the detached attached tongue. My only complaint is that when I wore these without socks, on the inside of the shoe, you can actually feel the stitching right here and it rubs against the top of your foot and that was really annoying uh, with no socks. So if you have no socks on and you try to wear in these, you can probably relate. It felt like it was just rubbing the top of my foot raw. But other than that, I think the overall look of this shoe is just super dope. And I like the overall revamp of the Pegasus so much that it actually made me wanna buy a pair uh, because I like the look. And the other thing to mention is there's gonna be another Pegasus version that has Zoom X in it. And I cannot wait to see the Pegasus with Zoom X. The price point's gonna be probably a lot more. Some people were saying 180, 190. And a Pegasus with Zoom X would be pretty much the runner's like dream. It, Zoom X is amazing for those that have not heard me say it enough on this channel. Like I love these shoes as much as I hate that they're not durable. The Zoom X and the responsiveness of these shoes and the like the spring that you feel when you walk and step in this shoe is unmatched by any shoe on the market, including Adidas Boost. The carbon fiber plate down the middle is amazing. So if they end up doing something like that with the Pegasus, hopefully they do the carbon fiber plate in the middle also, and you'll feel that spring. And then with flying it, that's gonna be a home run from my perspective. So definitely excited to see more of that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and like the comparison between the two and leave some comments in the comment section. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with between these two? And I'm happy that I was able to try both of these out because both of them, again, uh, give you guys something good to work with. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, notification bell if you wanna be notified when I post. If you wanna buy either of these shoes, check the links in the description and you can check some options out there that have these shoes available. But uh, thank you guys for stopping by and watching. We'll catch you guys for some more sneaker videos very soon. Peace guys.